Hello everyone, myself Siraj Srunasra from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Faculty of Technology, RK University, Rajkot. In this video lecture, I am going to explain the subject Power Plant Engineering ME511. The first chapter of this subject is Modern Thermal Power Plant. So here, the content of the first chapter is the modern thermal power plant layout, the component of thermal power plant, Rankine cycle, method to increase the efficiency of Rankine cycle, cogeneration power plant, site selection of the thermal power plant and recent development of the power in India. So here we explain, we study these things one by one. So now we start from the first modern thermal power plant layout. So as you know in the modern thermal power plants the mainly consist four circuits. So we can say the whole power plant is divided in the four plant four circuits. One is a coal and ash circuit, second air and gas circuit, feed water and steam flow circuit, cooling water circuit so now we can study this four cir circuit with the help of figure and we can understood the modern layout of the thermal power plant so now you can see this is the layout of the modern thermal power plant you can see here the four circuit the first one is a coal and s circuit the second one is a air and flue gas circuit third one is a steam and water circuit and fourth one is a circulating water circuit so this is mainly four circuit in the thermal power plant so how the thermal power plant works we can study over here so here we know for the combustion for to produce the steam we required some fuel and this fuel is comes from the coal handling plant so the fuel which are come outside it is comes to the storage where it is stored as per the requirement then after it is comes to the on hand coal handling plant where it is first pulverized pulverized means it is it is converted into powder form and then it is passes through the boiler inside the boiler with the help of the some air which are comes from the atmosphere pass to the air preheater where its temperature is raised with the help of the flue gases so this air and coal mixture are come to the boiler and start to combust so due to the combustion large amount of heat is generated this heat is passes through the water feed water so this water is now converted into steam so it's have a uh, high temperature and high pressure steam is generated inside the boiler now it is passes through the superheater where its temperature and pressure both are raised in the superheated superheater the steam is converted into superheated form so the function of the superheated superheater is to convert the steam up to its high temperature and pressure or we can say uh, in superheating form then after it is passes through the main valve and come to the turbine so turbine is the main part where the steam is expand and due to the expansion or we can say the steam which are come outside from the boiler it expand or strike on the blades so blades are mounted on the shaft so blades are rotated and the blades are rotated then shaft is rotated and shaft is rotated so shaft is directly connected with the generator or alternator so here the electricity is produced now the steam which are used inside the turbine it is comes outside and it is passes to the condenser inside the condenser the steam is condensed condensed means here the steam is converted into water at constant temperature because here only the latent heat of the steam is removed only latent heat is removed so we can say we can say there is a no temperature change ideally take place in the condenser 
only the phase changes take place so after the condenser the steam is converted into water so here the condensation process is take place with the help of the circulating cooling water and this circulating cooling water may be comes from the river or canal where it is available or maybe your plant is placed on the river front then it is possible but if there is a no availability of uh, such a resources at that time for the cooling purpose the cooling tower is required because the water circulating water is come inside the condenser where it is absorb the heat from the steam and it's become hot so when it is come outside it's become hot so we we can't uh, circulate this water continuously so we required to cool down it for next circulation so here inside the cooling tower this water is cooled down with the help of air atmospheric air and then after it is passes through this circulating circuit so here the water we can reuse with the help of the cooling tower so this is the function of the cooling tower is to condense the circulating water which use in the condenser now the steam which are condensed inside the condenser it is extracted by extracting pump and then it is passed through the lp heater and hp heater so what is the function of hp heater and lp heater so lp heater and hp heater is uh, increase the temperature of feed water which are come from the condenser and the lp and hp heater how they are um, work so here the lp heater and hp heater both increase the temperature of feed water with the help of the steam which are extracted from the different layer of the turbine so here we can say in the high pressure turbine the steam is extracted and it is used to increase the temperature of water in the hp heater same the in the low pressure turbine uh, section the steam is extracted and uh, mix with this feed water so here by the mixing of this steam water temperature is increased in lp heater and hp heater so when it is come out from the lp and hp heater the temperature of the feed water is raised so why why the, we we are raised the temperature of water because if we increase the temperature of water up to certain level then the requirement of the fuel inside the boiler we can reduce it and ultimately we are increase the efficiency of our plant so now the, this feed water which are used is so now this feed water is passes through the economizer inside the economizer with the help of the flue gases which are already used inside the boiler and super heater is passes through the economizer so in the economizer with the help of the flue gases the temperature of the feed water is raised and the finally this feed water is come to the boiler where it is converted into steam so this is all about the water and steam circuit now when the uh, fuel is burned after the combustion of the fuel the ash is generated this ash is comes to the ash handling plant and finally go to the ash storage so this is all about the ash and coal handling plant same thing the flue gases is we are used inside the super heater and economizer is part is passes to the air preheater where it is used to increase the temperature of atmospheric air because the, if the atmospheric air is come with the high pressure high temperature then we can say here the combustion take place uh, efficiently so now inside the air preheater we increase the uh, we increase the uh, temperature of the atmospheric air which mm, takes the participant in the combustion process with the help of the flue gases which already used in the economizer then after the flue gases is comes to the uh, uh, chimney and go to the atmosphere so this is all about the Mm, flue gases and uh, air circuit so here this is the mm, we can say modern thermal power plant looks like there is a so many component inside the power plant but here we can we can understood very easily with the help of uh, some some uh, limited uh, limited components so this is all about the modern thermal power plant